So next, I would like to welcome my good friend Shashank Uttama. Shashank will be going to 8th grade next fall at Marshall Simons Middle School in Burlington. His favorite subject is math, and his favorite sports are golfing and swimming. And he's part of the YMCA swim team. Later on in life, he hopes to be a doctor, preferably a surgeon. So please give a big hand to my good friend Shashank. My name is Shashank, and today I'm going to be talking about how to run for the office of POTUS, otherwise known as President of the United States. Before I begin, I'd like to thank Sh Shreya for her lovely speech and kind words of introduction. I certainly believe every word of the two. And um, I would also like to ask, can you all hear me? Yes, yes sir. Alright, so let's begin. If you feel like our country is not going in the right direction, if you feel like our country's leader is not taking our country in that direction. And if you all feel like you can do a better job than our current leader, then maybe you should consider running for the office. And I'm here to tell you how to do so. I'll be telling you about the requirements and process for running. I'll be talking about the primary season and the general election. I'll be talking a little bit more depth in depth of, of those two. And I'll also be talking a little bit about what you do when you're president. Speaking of presidents, this was said by George W. Bush at the 1989 Gridiron Club Diner. People say I'm indecisive, but I don't know about that. <laughs> Get it? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so now that that's all out of the way, let us talk about the requirements for running. Without meeting these requirements, you cannot run, obviously. The requirements being, you must at least be 35 years old and of which you must have lived 14 in the United States. You must also be a natural born U.S. citizen, which means you must have been born in one of the 50 states of our country or born in U.S. territories, such as military bases and embassies. And these next two I'm about to state are not mandatory, but they are good traits to have. It is nice to have a good education, and it is also nice to have a clean criminal record. <laughs> Yes. If you want to be president, don't commit no crimes. <laughs> All right. Now that the requirements are out of the way, I'll be talking about the process for running. And the process, the way to run is to, as they say, throw your hat into the ring. When you throw your hat into the ring, you're telling everyone that you want to run for president. And the, way you may, the main way to go about this is to <coughs> Declare your affiliation between one of the two parties. The two parties being the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, or you can run as an independent, which means that you are neither, you, don't, you do not want to run for either party. Speak, and uh, here's a fun fact for y'all. The only known president who has won as an independent was George Washington. He was neither a Democrat nor a Republican, and no other president has won as an independent. After, from George Washington. And now that we talked about the requirements for, the, and the process for running, I'll be talking about the primary season. The primary season is a race between you and your fellow party members for the spot of party nominee. When you are the party nominee, you are guaranteed a spot against the other party nominee in the general election. I'll be talking a little bit more in depth of the primary season. The main way to go about the primary season is to campaign. Campaigning is the most important thing to do. When you campaign, you'll be telling what problems you're going to solve, how you're going to solve these problems, why you're the other party candidates, etc. And when you do so, you will gain supporters. These supporters will vote for you in elections, otherwise known as caucuses in some states, and slash or will give you endorsements, such as money. And within this primary season, you will need a certain group of people on your side, called delegates. Delegates represent a group of people. When a delegate supports you, the group it represents knows that you are a good person to support. And when you gain a certain amount of votes from a delegate, you will be guaranteed a spot as party nominee. Now that I talked about the primary season, I'm going to be talking about the general election. After you have gained your party nomination and you have become party nominee, 
you will be going up against the opposing party nominee in the general election. The general election is as any normal election, but the stakes are much higher at this point. This is the most important election you will have. Just as any normal election would go, you would be telling what you're going to do, how you're going to solve these problems, why you're betting the opposing party nominee, etc. And after the general election, on November 2nd, there's a day called Voting Day, which is a day where people can vote for you or the opposing party nominee. And, of course, you will need a certain group of people on your side, called the Electoral College. And it's not a type of college, by the way. Not hard. The, similar to how delegates represent a group of people, the Electoral College also represents a group of people. The Electoral College consists of 538 people, and with a minimum of 270 votes required to win. You can do the math in your head if you want to verify this. And let's just say for this purpose, you have gained more Electoral College votes than your opposing party nominee. Congratulations! You have been promoted from party nominee to president-elect. Now January 20th is your inauguration day. So, between now and January 20th, you will have to build your team. This team will help you out while you are in the White House. The team will consist of chiefs, secretaries, even your vice president, and such. And then on January 20th, you will have your inauguration, and a couple days later, you, your team, and your family will be flown to the White House, and you specifically, into your Oval Office. Now it's time to start doing your job. As president, you have to govern the country. You are the most powerful man on the earth, and the leader of the free world. And your job is to govern the country. And you must also pass laws that you see as benefit to our country. And hopefully, you can do such a good job that you run for a second term. By the way, here's a quick question. Who wants Obama to run for a third term? <laughs> well, unfortunately, your dreams are crushed. A president cannot run for more than two terms before being permanently retired. That is why you never see a president reoccurring after their second term. So, today I have talked about how to run for the office of POTUS, otherwise known as President of the United States. I have talked about the requirements and process for running. I have talked about the primary season and the general election. And I've talked a little bit about what you do when you're president. So, if you feel like our country is not going in the right direction, if you feel like our country's leader is not taking our country in that direction, and if you feel that you can do a better job than our current president, then maybe you should consider running for the office. And hopefully, just hopefully, you can, as Donald Trump says, <coughs> make America great again. <laughs>